So, Miss Fallen Wish, tell me what's on your mind. Hello, Doctor. Actually, I didn't really have a problem. I was uh, actually wondering if I could ask you a question. Oh? Something you wish to know? I was actually wondering if... Well, you see, I run my own therapy office in Winnie River. I was wondering if you might be willing to let me ask you a few questions and then give me a few pointers on my technique and such. I see. You wish to know how to help others with personal problems, then? Well, how about you tell me what you've been doing when some pony comes to you asking for advice? Well, you see, because of my past, I often have an understanding of a lot of problems others come to me with. So, I take what I know from personal experience and give the best advice I possibly can. I always look at a problem from every vantage point and try to seek out the factors which are the greatest contributors to the overall issue. I mostly just try to be less of a doctor and more of a good friend whom is there to listen and offer advice. More than anything, I think this helps. Sounds like you've already come up with an effective means of creating a welcoming and understanding environment. Sometimes the best method for helping others really does come down to just making them feel understood. Occasionally even to the point of not trying to fix their issue, but just listening to them talk about it. That can work wonders more often than others might think. What else are you trying to seek advice on, though? Um, well, I was wondering if I may be able to ask you a few personal questions. Ask away. Well, first of all, I was wondering, do your patients ever touch on subjects that may bother you? I mean, stuff that can be a really touchy topic for you personally. Ah, uh, yes. That has happened on occasion, I must admit. I'm sure that each of them have always meant well and were genuinely seeking answers they needed for their own issues. But one cannot focus on helping others without ever going through their own struggles along the way. I can safely say that it's never reached a point of contention or regret on my part. It's been a little painful for me here and there, though I'm always glad to have taken these steps to help so many in this office. The struggles were most certainly worthwhile. I see. I guess sometimes when I feel upset over a topic a patient has brought up, I feel like I may say something wrong. Like, I can't help when I too am hurting. But I always push that aside and try my hardest. Have you ever had any patients give sudden outbursts of anger or sorrow? And how have you dealt with this? On occasion, this has happened in my office and I have a hard time finding the right words to help them. And once, I've even been afraid, though the individual's anger was not directed at me. Usually, I find myself at a loss for words and hug them instead, which seems to calm them, but I still feel like I haven't helped as much as I could have. I suppose there have been a few outbursts of anger, or even sorrow, but when there is rage spreading around you, I remember a phrase, a soft answer turneth away wrath. As long as you are first focused on keeping yourself calm, welcoming, and understanding, then you can focus on being the help they so desire. Though I want to emphasize that first they have to want to be helped, and sometimes they're more interested in feeling justified in their actions rather than learning anything new. And if you're worried about anyone directing their anger towards you, I tend to remember another simple phrase. Why take offense? As much as we may be unable to change our surroundings in many different circumstances, we always have a choice in how we will feel about it. If we say to ourselves that we'll get angry whenever certain circumstances arise, then we become more like an object that is acted upon, as opposed to an agent who acts. Your willingness to show simple affection, such as a hug in such times, is admirable. It shows a caring demeanor and a desire to help heal. And perhaps there will be times when we could have said something differently or acted more favorably in such a situation. But we must show a desire to learn if we ever expect those who are struggling to learn from us. Does that make sense to you, Miss Wish? Of course. Actually, that helps a lot. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, I was wondering, do you ever feel helpless when someone who needs your help refuses to accept it? Sometimes, even recently, I've been faced with problems I just couldn't help with simply because they refused my help. They push me away, direct anger or even hate towards me, and just block me out. What do you do in that situation if so? Be patient and endure. 
and if that might mean you'll be in for the long haul, then so be it. Oftentimes you can help others a great deal with a little time and understanding here and there. Though on occasion there will inevitably be circumstances where all you can do is hold on to hope and think of the bigger picture. They may push you away for a time, perhaps even a long time, but if you truly care about their well-being, you must be willing to give them their space, endure their unkind thoughts and actions, and be ready for when they might be more open to your assistance. And in the meantime, you can always direct your efforts to those others who are seeking help. There's never going to be a shortage of people who just want someone to listen to them for a while. Of course. Thank you, Doc. I have indeed been doing this. Even recently. I'm sure you've heard of the many problems which continue to arise within our community as of late, and I feel like I've been caught in the center of many of them. Though a few have pushed me away, after a long time of enduring and patience, some have finally opened up. But others have not. Though I understand what you're saying, it still tends to hurt when they push me away or won't let me help. Though I know I shouldn't feel this way, when I can't help, I feel as though any negative outcomes are my own fault. Have you ever felt this way? Most certainly. If you never step back and think about how you might have said or done something better, then you really aren't learning anything. It would be foolish of me to say that I've not had those same feelings every so often. Our struggles are far more important to our growth than most people care to admit. As long as you're trying to refine your methods and even learn from those you seek to help, then I'd say you're well on your way. Do you think that'll be enough for you to get started? Um, yes. That's actually very helpful and I feel a lot better. But I had just one more question if you're okay with that. What might that be? Well... Do you ever fear you'll give the wrong advice, or that you have? Every day. I suppose that fear will never go away completely. Like I said, it helps to step back and question what you've said and done. Though that fear can oftentimes cause undue stress that may not always be necessary, that same fear can drive us to constantly improve. Thank you, Doctor. This really does help, and I feel a lot better. I hope this conversation helped you as well. Any hooves, I must be off. Um, and if you ever need any pony to talk to, I'm always willing to listen. Have a good evening, Dr. Wolf. I'll keep that in mind. Take care, Fallen Wish. It's good to be helping. Keeping an open mind is the key to wishful thinking.